Once again today in that name that's above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we greet you. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. We appreciate our visitors and you that's listening out in the radio listening audience. We most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up, we can be a real inspiration to you. So get on your phone out there and call a friend, have them to tune in. You take your Bible today and turn to Proverbs chapter 11 and Luke chapter 15. Now, if you out in the radio listening audience, if you're not getting a daily broadcast, if you tune to the station where you're now listening at 12 o'clock noon each day, Monday through Saturday, you can get the daily broadcast. I hope you will. And then I want you to pray for me and write to me. I'd be glad to send you a list of some 300 of our cassette tapes. Now, tapes, the tape this morning will be number 317. Number 317, I'm going to speak on the subject, The Wise Soul Winner. Now, if you'd like to have the music and the message and get it on cassette tape by writing in and sending the tape, I'll send in a gift for other $3 for the tape, and the gift is used to help defray our radio expense. So you write to me, because the work is together in getting out the gospel, God gave the word, and great is a company of those that publish it. Now, my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. So you pray for me, and I appreciate it so very much. And we're trying to get the gospel out. We're trying to be a blessing to people that are shut-ins, some in convalescent homes, some in the hospital, some in prison, some are shut in in their homes. And we're trying to get the gospel out on the highways, byways, and hedges. And I appreciate this opportunity. I have a little clip in here. I clipped out of the paper the other day I was reading. And uh, it's entitled, Is the Lord's Church a Zoo? Now listen to this, will you please? Some church members are stubborn as a mule, a Missouri mule, about doing church work, but as sly as a fox in their own business deals, as busy as a bee in spreading the latest gossip, but as quiet as a mouse in spreading the gospel of Christ. Many are as blind as a bat to see the need of others, but have eyes of a hawk to see the faults of a few. Some as eager as a beaver about barbecue, but as lazy as a dog about the prayer meeting. Some will roar like a lion when, they, when things do not go just to suit them, but they're as gentle as a lamb when they need the preacher of the church. Some as noisy as a blue jay when calling on the church for advice, but as timid as a kitten about talking to the lost and as slow as a snail about visiting the absentees and shut-ins. Many are night owls on Saturday night, but bed bugs on Sunday morning. Slippery as an eel on Sunday evening, and as scarce as hen teeth on Wednesday night. Is that finished today? Well, I'll let you be the judge. Now I'm reading today from Proverbs chapter 11, first of all. Proverbs chapter 11, page 680 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Let me begin reading with verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. If you notice in verse 30, he that winneth souls is wise. Now over in the book of Luke chapter 15, the Bible tells us in verse 10, Page 1097, likewise I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Now we know the winning of men to Jesus Christ is the greatest business in all the world, trying to get people saved. The Bible said Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. I know and realize we come to God's house to worship, and you should. We come to God's house for prayer and Bible study and to pool our resources that we might spread the gospel. 
and that we should. We should assemble together in the house of God for many reasons. But many of us never try to witness and never try to win anybody to Jesus. One of the greatest thrills you'll ever get in your life is winning somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ personally. I know and realize as we support those that win souls, as we give to missions, as we have support Camp Maranatha, where Brother Brock and Sister Brock, who's present here today, is in charge, and they win many out there during the summer, especially. And we have a little part in that. I realize that. We have missionaries on the foreign fields. We have home mission work, such as the camps and the orphanage homes and the jail ministry, and the radio ministry. And we work just together getting out the gospel. And souls are saved by your support, your prayers, your financial support, your encouragement, of course, or you're helping to win souls to Christ. But what I want to drive home to you this morning is the fact that you need to try to witness and win people personally to the Lord Jesus Christ. That'll be one of the greatest thrills of your life when you win somebody to Jesus. I'll never forget the first person that I had the privilege of winning to the Lord Jesus. It set me on fire and I was ready to go after others. But you know, some of us never try like we should. There are souls to be won among your own relatives, among your neighbors, on your job, wherever you have the opportunity. And yet we don't witness for God like we should. I believe with all my heart if we try a little harder, pray a little more, put forth that special effort, we could win somebody to Jesus. There's many ways you can do that and you ought to do it. We know there's souls to be won because Jesus said in John chapter 4, the fields are white under harvest. He said that in his day. And today we have some 5 billion people on the face of the earth, and most of them are without God. Never been a time when there's so many people that need to be one to Jesus Christ as in this we now live. Never been a time when the fields are more white under harvest than at this particular time. We need to reach children for God, young people for God, adults for God. Now the Bible lets us know that soul winning by God's people down here is the real joy of heaven. I just read in my text where there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And I believe every time you win somebody to Jesus, there's some rejoicing going on in heaven. I believe that. And we know that hell is deeply concerned about the loss on the earth because Dives cried out to Father Abraham, Send Lazarus back that may warn his brethren lest they come this place of torment. Now we see that heaven is deeply concerned over lost sinners. Hell is deeply concerned over lost sinners. We are the only ones can do anything about it and we're the least concerned. Now if God would say to all the angels in heaven and the people that's gone on to heaven, I'll let you go back down to the earth and do some soul winning. In a matter of a few minutes, every person in heaven would be down here trying to win souls to Jesus. If God should say to the inmates of hell, I'm going to let you out, send you back to the earth, and let you do some witnessing and soul winning, in a matter of seconds, every inmate in hell would be up on this earth trying to win souls to God. They would like to do it. People in heaven, no doubt, would like to have another chance at it. And we're the only ones that can do anything about it. And we're doing very little about it. All of us can be soul winners. There's not a person here in this church but can witness for Jesus. Tell God how, or tell people how God saved you. And get people to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's many ways you can do it. Now some of course, um, we need to realize that we need to be saved ourselves. Now you can't be effective and powerful in soul winning unless you know without a doubt that you're saved. That's one thing you need to get settled. Get settled in your mind, in your heart, that you're a born again believer, that you know the Lord Jesus, that you're on the road to heaven. And when you know that, then of course that must come first of all before you can really be effective in soul winning. 
that we are saved, that God is no respecter of person. Every individual that you see walking down the street, passing by your house, working in the plant where you work or wherever you work, you must remember that person has a soul. And that person one day will either go to heaven or go to hell. And God is no respecter of persons. And if somebody don't win that person to Jesus Christ, that person will go to hell as certain as the world. You need to realize that. I'm standing here before you today because somebody got concerned about me. There's a dear old pastor over in the city of Greenville, South Carolina. He's up in years now. He can hardly see, he can hardly hear. I just I suppose he's around 90 years old by this time. He was deeply concerned about me when I was a young man. My dear old mother that loved God was deeply concerned about me. And they prayed and they worked to reach me for Christ. This pastor, Brother W.F. Lister, at that time was pastor of the Westview Baptist Church uh, there in the city of Greenville, South Carolina. I found out last Monday, I spoke in Greenwood, South Carolina last Monday in the Faith Baptist Church. Brother Tony spoke down in Edmonton in the West End Baptist Church Wednesday night. Appreciate your prayers. But I found out last Monday that Brother Lister's dear wife had just recently gone on to be with the Lord. I found out also that Dr. B.B. Carwell's widow had just recently gone on to be with the Lord. Gone out into eternity. But anyway, this dear old man who is the elder man now, he was about a middle-aged man in those days. He was deeply concerned about me, and God struck me down. My mother came from Athens, or from Madison County out here over to the city of Greenville to be with me when I was on the bed of affliction when God struck me down. And then the pastor came down one Sunday afternoon, and he sat down, he talked a while, and then he read some scripture. And then he looked over at me, and he said, uh, Virgil, don't you think it's about time that you were trusting Jesus as your Savior? And that stirred my mother, and she came rushing to my bedside. She put her arms around my neck, and her tears fell upon my face. She said, Son, won't you get saved? I want you to get saved. And the preacher had me by the hand. My mother had her arm around my neck. The Holy Spirit had me by the heart. And there I could not say no. Beloved, listen to me. Had they not been concerned about me, I wouldn't be here today. Had they not been concerned about me, some of you wouldn't be sitting here saved today. Had they not been concerned about me, there's some churches that would not be in existence today. People in heaven that would not be there today that God, through this unworthy, weak vessel, has spoken through to reach people for Jesus Christ. One of the greatest thrills you'll ever have is winning somebody to Jesus. I won my precious sister-in-law to Christ when she was in her late teens. She gave birth to a child. She was from Greenville. My brother and Meredith, they came to uh, here in Madison County. She gave birth to a child. And, of course, she died from childbirth by giving birth to that child a few days later. I found out she was seriously ill. I got off of my job as a young Christian. I came all the way to near Danielsville, where they resided at that time. And I walked in. She's lying on the bed. She's about 16 and a half, 17 years old. I looked at her, and I called her by name as I knelt down upon my knees. I says, Ardell, I came all the way from Greenville to pray for you. I came over here to help you to Jesus. And I want you to get saved. And she was deathly sick. And she said, Virgil... I do want to get saved. I want to get saved, she said, and tears rolled down her face. There on my knees, a young man, I led my sister-in-law to Jesus. Went back to Greenville. A day or two later, they called me. They said she's gone on to be with the Lord. I wouldn't take anything in the world for being saved to be able to reach that person for God. Many years ago, my precious father-in-law, which was a good, humble man, but he didn't know God. He was 65 years old, didn't know the Lord. He was bitten by a black widow spider, and he went to see a country doctor. The doctor gave him a pain tablet and sent him back home. He wouldn't go to the hospital. If I had my time to go on over, I'd have cared him whether he wanted to go or not, but I didn't know in those days. And 
And he didn't want to go and we didn't force him to go. And people in those days didn't like to go to the hospital. They didn't like to hear the name hospital. And so he kept getting worse and became a deathly sick. And one afternoon I went out and, and sat down to talk with him. And we went in a separate room alone to ourselves. I said to him, I said, um, uh, Mr. Martin, I said, I want to talk with you about Jesus. His lips quivered. He said, yes, I, I'd like to talk to you about Jesus. I want you to talk to me about it. I said, Mr. Martin, I want, I want you to get saved. He said, Virgil, I, I do want to get saved. He said, I'm a sick man, and, and I, I like to know the Lord, and I'd like to be saved. I gave him the word of God and told him how to be saved. Down on our knees, my arm around my father-in-law, at the age of 65, he repented and gave his heart to Jesus. The next morning at 5 o'clock, he died in my arms and went on to be with the Lord. Dear people, we need to realize we need to try to witness to people personally and tell them about Jesus Christ. One of the greatest thrills you'll ever have is winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've told you about the young boy in service when I was in Camp Blandon, Florida. I won a group of people to God out on Bilwack, baptized 17 of them because they didn't have a chance to go back home and unite with the church. They want to be baptized. I baptized them in a lake out there in Camp Blandon, Florida. One young boy, just above 18 years old, going on 19, he was saved and he was so glad that God had saved him. And then we separated after our training. And he wrote my wife and he said, uh, Mrs. Edwards, he had our address. He said, I'm being sent to the Pacific. I was sent to the Europe and he was sent to the Pacific. And he said to my wife, he said, I'm writing you to let you know that your husband won me to Jesus. And I'm headed for the battlefront. And I want you to tell your husband, if I don't get back, I'll meet him in heaven someday. But if I make this war, if I get back, if I come back alive, I'll make it my business to contact him when I get back. I never heard from him. God let me come back. Evidently, he was killed in action. I'll meet him someday in heaven. He told my wife, said, you tell Brother Edwards if I don't make it, I'll see him someday in heaven. On and on I could go telling you about experiences like that that God has given me in the past 45, 46 years in the ministry. Thy soul's to be won. Dwight L. Moody is one of the greatest soul winners that ever lived. And he wouldn't rest unless he was telling somebody about Jesus. Many years ago, I was here in the office in Athens uh, visiting um, a dear old gentleman, Mr. C. Rollin, who's now going to be with God. At that time, he was an old gray-headed man. I walked in there on his desk with a picture of Dwight L. Moody. I said to Mr. Rollin, I said, you know, that was a great soul winner there. He said, yes, I'll never forget the time I heard him preach. And when he said that, I pulled my chair up a little close. I said, sir, do I understand you to say you heard Dwight L. Moody preach? He said, I surely did. I said, tell me about it, sir. He said, well, when I was 18 years old, Mr. Moody came to Atlanta. I made it my business to go to Atlanta to hear him there in the tabernacle. Said when I walked in, he was in the pulpit, kind of a stocky fellow, and he was on his toes, and he was dead after souls. And he was preaching on the subject, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall also reap. He said, I'll never forget it. So I sat down in the back. After everybody just about gone and said, Mr. Moody came to go out the door and I stopped him. I said to Mr. Moody, he said, yes, young man. He said, my name is C.A. Rollin. I'm from Athens, Georgia. I came all the way up here to hear you preach. And sir, I'd like to talk with you a few minutes if you have the time. So he looked down and said, young man, I'm on the way to the hotel. I'll converse with you on the way. Come along. He said, we started down the street and said, every minute, every time I tried to engage in a conversation about the Lord and about souls, he had stopped, he had interrupt and tell somebody about Jesus on the street, on the way to the hotel. That man was ever after souls like a, a rabbit, a hound dog after a rabbit, a bird dog trying to find a quail. He was after souls at all times, everywhere he went. One day he walked up to the light post. That's the old bum by the light post. Mr. Moody walked up and began to talk to him and said, Man, are you a Christian? And the man said, That's none of your business, sir. 
And he said, uh, that, that is my business, man. I want you to know that. Oh, he said, you must be Mr. Moody. He said, yes, this is Mr. Moody. And Mr. Moody won him to God. Every one of us can witness for Jesus. Every one of us can win souls. There's different ways to do it. You can talk to him personally. There's nothing any more powerful, any more effective than a face-to-face -face personal talk with a man about his soul. You ought to do that. You can do that, and God will honor that. Tell them how God saved you. Win somebody to Jesus. There's other ways you can get them saved. Give out gospel tracts. A few years ago, there was a drunk walking down the street in Atlanta, Georgia. He saw a gospel tract floating down through a drain there where it had been a rain and washed it down there. And he reached down and picked it up. And it happened to be a tract that a various Oliver Green had mailed out to someone and somehow or another had gotten on the street and, and in that water drain and, and this man picked it up and he carried it to his place of abode and he sat down, he looked at it and he read it and he reread it and he read it. God got a hold of his heart and God saved him and he wrote Dr. Green and told him what had happened and wanted to pray for him. Beloved, listen, you can give out tracts. You ought to give out tracts. Dr. Fred Garland man who is bed fast at the present time, disabled to get out of the bed, understand. Used to carry tracts with him everywhere he went. Always giving out tracts, giving out gospel tracts. God will use some of those tracts to help people. You ought to have some in your pocket. Be giving some out. If you go somewhere to eat, leave one at the table for the waitress. Give them out wherever you go. And God will honor his word. He most certainly will. Not only that, you can get people saved, get them to God by bringing them to the church and getting them on the influence of the gospel. You'd be surprised how many people are saved because somebody insisted on them coming to the house of God. You ought to insist on people coming to you to the church. There used to be a man here in Athens. He turned out to be one of the greatest personal soul winners in the city of Athens, Georgia. He's gone on to be with the Lord, and his name was Mr. Pope. He was highly critical of Christian people. He was highly critical of churches. He had nothing to do with uh, churches or the Bible. He didn't want to talk about God. His wife loved the Lord with all of her heart. That's a man from Atlanta who came to Athens many years ago, an evangelist, doing a great job for God in that day, preaching hell, fine damnation every night. And his wife said to him, she said, um, I wish you'd go down and, and uh, hear that preacher. He said, I don't want to hear that preacher. He said, they're all out for money. I don't care anything about hearing them. Oh, she said, they pass the pens down there every night. He said, I bet you they re he gets a lot of it, don't he? She said, I'll tell you what. He said, go see for yourself. Just go down there and see how much money he gets. He went down the tent that night and he watched them win the past collection plate. This preacher put his feet in the fire and preached hell, fine damnation. Came back home, his wife said, well, um, how did you make out? He said, all right. Said, he, got, he got a lot of it, all right. Said, pen's full of it. The next night, I um, happened to be a uh, payday here in Athens. And she said, I'll tell you what, if he got a big pile of money last night, he'll really rake her in tonight. She ought to go down there and just see how much he gets. He said, I think I will. And he went back down to that tent, and the old evangelist put his feet in the fire and preached hell, fine damnation. And then the man came back home, and as he came up the steps, he had a little different footstep as he came up the steps. His wife prayed both nights while he was under the influence of the gospel. She said, oh, God, oh, God, save my husband. I want him saved. I don't want him to go to hell. And he came up the steps a little quicker that night than usual. She met him at the door, and she said, well, said, um, how much to get tonight? Oh, he, he said he really got it. Said, said, not on that, but said, praise God, he got me too tonight. Said, don't we have five dollars? She said, that's all good. Let me have it. I'm going to give it to the preacher tomorrow night. That man was saved and became one of the greatest personal soul winners in Athens, Georgia. It was nothing unusual to see him down on the street, on Broad Street, telling somebody about Jesus, down on his knees, praying for him. Doing a football game here in Athens, he's giving out tracts. Gave a man a track. A man said, is this a ticket to the game? He said, yes, it's a ticket to the greatest game you'll ever see. Gave him that track. That man took that track, went on to the football game, read the thing, carried it home with him, reread it, reread it, and God got a hold of him and he got saved. Weeks later, Mr. Pope was in Gainesville. The man recognized him. He said, hey there, mister. 
He said, uh, you the man that gave me the ticket to the game and said, I read that you told the truth. That's a game of all games. I'm glad you gave me that ticket because it told me about Jesus and God has saved my soul. Oh, beloved, you never know when you witness for God to give out a track or carry somebody to church what God is going to do for them. That man, he challenged our hearts in soul winning everywhere he went. He'd go to the bus station and spend a whole day down there witnessing and giving out gospel tracts. Oh, yes, they called him a fool, a fanatic, but they called Paul a fanatic and said he's beside himself. And you need to give out tracts, and some people take them, some won't, but uh, God will use his word. He certainly will. And when that old man came down to die, he was on his deathbed. You know what he said to his wife? He said, honey, come here. She went into his bedroom. Oh, he said, do you hear what I hear? She said, what do you hear? He said, I hear the most beautiful music I've ever heard in my life. I hear the most beautiful singing coming right from heaven. Don't you hear that? She said, I really don't. He said, listen, closed his eyes, went home to be with God. Great and mighty soul winner. Listen to me, you don't have to be highly educated. If you can't read your name in box call letters, you'd be a soul winner. Dwight L. Moody never finished the fifth grade in grade school. Robbed hell of over a million souls. Charles E. Finney, that great lawyer. God saved that lanky a man. And, and he went into a Mestis preacher's house and said, God save me. And I, I like to do something for God. And, and said, I don't know what to do. And he said, I'm nothing but an old stick. That's all around. Just no straight stick, sir. And can you tell me what to do? That message preacher said, yes, I'll tell you what to do. Let that old straight stick get on fire. And people that come and see that stick burn. That's exactly what Finney did. Got on fire for God. And Rochester, New York had over 80,000 people to come to God under his ministry. God is no respect to a person. When Dwight L. Moody came to die, he said, God is looking for a man that he can use fully surrendered to him. All God is asking for us is to surrender. Give our all to the Lord. Go out after lost souls in every direction. And somebody, you're going to win to Jesus. And they'll win somebody else. And they'll win somebody else. You need to realize that. Beloved, many people never try to win souls to God. But God said, go. The Bible said, he that winneth souls is wise. Oh, you say now, preacher Edwards, I, I don't believe I can hardly talk. I, I can't get up enough courage to win souls to Jesus. Listen to me. Yes, you can. I've heard people stand on one street corner and holler at somebody on the other. And yet they couldn't whisper for Jesus. Beloved, you can talk about everything under heaven. You can sit down and talk about ball games and politics and talk about your neighbor, talk about the church and talk about the preacher. Don't tell me you can't talk about people about Jesus Christ. You certainly can. You just won't do it. You ought to try it. It's hard to do because the devil is against it. But God will give you grace and God's grace is sufficient. God will make you a fish of men. It's our duty and our responsibility. Now listen to me. If we don't win these people to God, they're going to hell. If somebody don't win that sinner to God, he's going to hell. If somebody had to warn me to God, I might have gone to hell. If somebody had to warn you to God, you might have gone to hell. Listen, there's souls to be won for Jesus. And we need to get busy about it and win all we can to God. You can write letters, give out tracts. I was in a meeting yonder 50 miles north of New York City several years ago. There in the meeting, I have some tracts. And a lady said to me, said, uh, uh, Brother Edwards, I'd like to have one of those tracts. I have a friend over in Germany I'd like to send that tract to. I said, lady, I'd be glad for you to have it. I gave her a gospel tract. You know, several weeks later, I received a letter back from a person in Germany that told me that a German girl read that track and got under conviction and God saved her soul. I never dreamed when I gave that woman that track and she sent it to Germany that God had used that track to win a German girl to God. Oh, you never know when you give out a track, when you win. Oh, you say, Preacher Edwards, they won't listen to me. God will hold them responsible. You deliver the message. You tell them how God saved you. You invite them to church. You get them on the influence of the gospel. Many years ago, I was meeting up here in the tabernacle on the Commerce Road. And some of you heard me tell this. There's a man came down and he got saved. Wore his overalls every night, which was perfectly all right. I didn't mind that. 
And he drove an old A model Ford. That man went out every night and filled up that A model Ford with people. As many as he could get in there and brought them sinners, most of them. And they got saved. Did you know 19 people that that man brought to that meeting, that two weeks meeting, got saved? That man could hardly read his name in box car letters. That man might not even have a suit to put on. Oh, his overhauls and a model Ford. But he is responsible for getting 19 people to God. Did you know out of that two weeks meeting, five men surrendered to preach the gospel? God help us to realize that we need to try to win souls to Jesus. God, on your effort. Oh, you're saying now, preacher, Edwards, they won't hear me. They won't listen. God will hold them responsible. It's your responsibility to witness to them. Tell them what God has done for you. Memorize the scriptures. Spend time in prayer. Ask God to give you wisdom to win souls to Jesus Christ. You ought to do it. That's a great reward for soul winners. Let me tell you this. I move toward the close of this message. Many years ago, I had a young boy in my church, and uh, he, he surrendered to preach the gospel as a young man. And on the way home from work one day, he lived over near a place called Mason's Mill, beyond Danielsville. He saw a hitchhiker down here at the crossroads, where the road divides down here to go toward Everton. There was a young man standing there. He said, I think I'll pick him up and witness to him. So he picked the young man up, and, and they began to witness to him. And the man started talking about, I was in World War II and I killed so many Japanese and I did this and, and began to talk about how mean he was and began to get nervous. But this young man just kept on witnessing, kept on telling him about Jesus, told him how God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He witnessed to that man all the way beyond Danielsville. And then when this stopped, he waited to turn into his home to let the man out. The man had tears in his eyes. And he said, now wouldn't you like to get saved? You'll talk about how mean you've been, how mean you've been to your family. Wouldn't you like to get saved and go back home and tell your family what God's done for you? The man began to cry. He said, sir, I sure would. I sure would. He led that man to Jesus Christ there beside the road in his automobile. And then the man said, now listen. I'm glad I got saved. I'm glad God saved me. I'm going back home tell my wife and children that God has saved me. But he said, I want to give you something. He reached on the inside of his pocket and pulled out a pistol, a revolver. He said, young man, I'm going to give you the gun I fully intended to kill you with, rob you, and take your automobile. That was my full intention when I got in this car. I meant to do it. That's why I kept telling you how mean I was. How many jobs I'd kill. I was getting up courage to do what I fully intended to do. And I intended to do that. But I'm saved now. And I want you to take this gun. I'm going back home to my wife and children. I'm going to live for Jesus the rest of my days. That young boy took that gun. Pulled up in his driveway. He looked back and that man was thumbing back from the direction that he came. He's going back home to tell his people about God. What if that young man had not witnessed to him? That robber... That murder was going to kill him. Take his money, take his car, dispose of his body, and go on his way. Beloved, that's the best weapon you have as a good testimony for Jesus Christ. Witness the people, tell them about God. Young people can do it. Small children can do it. I've had children influence their parents to God. I've seen boys win other young boys to God. Their souls to be won. And the Bible said, he that winneth souls is wise. Then to take up what Brother Daniel had to say about it. Daniel said, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the ferment, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You ever hear the old song, will there be any stars in my crown? Maybe more true to that than you're aware. The Bible said the soul winner will have stars, he shine as the stars forever. Yonder in the glory world. Have you ever won a soul to Jesus? Oh, you say, preacher, I never have. That'd be one of the greatest thrills of your life. A few years ago, there's a man lived across the street here. I knew the man was just ready to come to Jesus. I could go, go to bed very easily, want him to God. But I waited for two of my young preacher boys to come to church that Sunday night. I said, boys, 
Would you like to go across and witness to somebody about Jesus? I said, I believe that man over there wants to be saved. Oh, yes, preacher. Yes, pastor. We want to go. I said, go across the street to that house. I believe that man is ready to be saved. Now, I could have gone and won him to God, but I want them to do it. They went over there. They won that man to Jesus. They came back over here praising God, jumping up and down. Said, preach, he got saved. Said, amen. Said, he got saved over there. We want him to God. I said, that's fine. I'm glad he did. That set those boys on fire. They were looking for somebody else to win to Jesus. When you win somebody to God and realize what you've done, realize that you've got somebody from a life of sin, somebody from the flames of hell. Jude said, snatch him from the burning. When you win a man to God, you cover a multitude of sins. Suppose that man grows up, raises up a family of evil people, and they become uh, robbers and thieves, and, and they all end up in hell. That's terrible. But you win that man to God, then he in turn wins his family to God, and you see what happens, and they win others to God. See, there's nothing like soul winning. God wants us to do it. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. And if you haven't tried, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, you can be a witness. You can be a soul. And everybody you witness to is not going to get saved, but some will. They might not get saved then, but to get saved later, get on the phone. You get on the phone and gossip about everything else. Get on your phone and tell people about Jesus. Do something for God. Witness and be a witness for God. As a saved person, you should. That's our responsibility to go out after him, and God expects us to do so. Thank you. You've listened well. Stand to your feet. Father, I pray today that you'll take the message, that you'll drive it in the hearts of your people, that you'll make us better soul winners, more faithful in our witnessing. Help us, our Father, to get people to God. Help us to witness. Stir this people. Use the message out in the radio listening audience. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Debbie, play us a stanza. While Debbie's playing, I want you to ask God what he'd have you to do about it. If God speaks to you to come down here to get saved, to come back to God or join the church or whatever, God tells you to come to this front, you come and we'll help you. We're going to wait just a moment while she plays a stanza song. 